What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. I am uh, streaming solo again. And today we're going to play a little sweet modern deck called Go for the Gold, courtesy of Seamonk90. The 90th Seamonk, uh, but the first Seamonk in our hearts, which is the important part. And uh, you can check out the deck list in the description below, or you can just take a look at it right now. Down here we have a Verdant Catacomb and a Windswept Heath, and then everything else is just kosher. Also, we got a chromatic lantern and a two damping sphere on the sideboard, in addition to the other things. And, um, yeah. All right. So, basically, the idea is you're going to play these mana confluences. You're going to play Pillar of the Parents to add to cast multicolor spells. You have reflecting pools that work amazingly with both Pillar and mana confluence, and Gemstone Mine, and City of Brass. So, ideally, you're just going to have a million ways to cast things. One concern is Birds of Paradise can't get cast on turn one by Pillar or by Reflecting Pool. So our ways of casting Birds on turn one are seemingly limited to these. So 13 ways to cast a Bird on turn one. Not terrible. I got a Derby update and want to send you a pick. What's the best way to do this? Facebook, Twitter, or on here? On here is fine if you have a way to link it. Or if you want to send it to the thing. To the... To the, to the the messages i guess is that an undreamt tuna in the chat um thank you. another month in the charlie thank you so much buddy really appreciate it welcome back welcome back um i like unclaimed territory as a card i don't think we have enough unified creature types to really get that get that going either way as usual i don't like to uh I don't like to play the deck, or or rather, um, hold on, we can move this now. That's better. All right. Uh, I don't like to I don't like to play the deck before I don't like to make changes to the deck before you play it. That's what I'm going for here. So let's see what we can do. Oh, we got. Oh, that's well. We're not going to jump into standard queue with this guy. That's not how that works. Let's go for the gold. Thank you. I love these Mike birthday celebration streams. You and me both. And Dominus, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. Wow, this chat is entirely too large. I will... Hey, look, we got two sources to cast this Bird of Paradise on turn one. And uh, slide right into the Spell Queller. I like it. Going for the gold is risking it for the biscuit. These are risk it... Risk, yeah, these are very similar philosophies. Although the problem with the bird, Birds of Paradise as a card in Modern is that it never actually it it's it never remains on the battlefield on turn two. However, that might be not the case against this affinity deck. Hmm. More like Quell Speller, am I right? I don't know if you are right actually. I can't confirm nor deny this at this juncture. I think more evidence is required. Uh, I will not block. I hate that I missed the 15-hour stream. I had so many mean things to say to Elk Tears. Wow. Wow. Well, you know what they say. Oh, destroy an artifact? That's pretty good, right? Hey, that's pretty good. Um, we could also just terminate it. Terminate's probably better. The thing I like about Band Charm is that if we draw a land, we can go Glittering Wish and Terminate next turn. I also don't mind keeping up spell queller. Band charm is nice because you can get rid of like a cranial plating too. I am just gonna kill this dude now. This is not a card I want to keep around, so. That's exactly what we wanted to keep the band charm for, interestingly enough. 
more like smell queller am i right he likes to clean yeah okay i can get i can get i can get behind that i'm i can i can do uh i can do smell queller more than more than quell speller is that what we is that what we did hmm. i think we can probably pass here and just see what happens I wish Glittering Wish was a... I wish Glittering Wish was an instant. That would be great. Although if they play like another thing, I would be happy to like counter it and block. This is also a deck where you want to like keep your sideboard available. I don't think I care about that. I definitely don't care about that. Uh, um, yeah, okay. See, now we're gonna go green, blue, blue. Got him. No blocks. I have no cards in hand. All right, well, we just have to deal with this sad little board here, I guess. Oh, can we? Let's see what we hit with this. This is exciting. I feel like all the cards we could possibly hit are very good, like a lightning helix, for example. Well, I still gain the life. So this guy can't block anything, actually. So we're just gonna attack with this. I'm okay with it. All right, we should probably uh, deal with these Ink Moth Nexuses before they get out of hand. How can we do this? What can we go get out of our sideboard? Oh, a Fracturing Gust seems pretty nuts. Uh, of course they get to see that. Destroy creatures when it's just control ourselves. Or no, destroy our no, no. We do have a trophy, but I don't really want to, uh, I mean, if I can go get Fracturing Gust, I feel like it's pretty good for us. Um, use Glittering Wish? Yeah, okay. Mm, okay. Uh, let's get Fracturing Gusto. So we can actually block one. I don't really want to block one, though. I guess we could just take two more poison. Late December, back in '68. What a lady, what a night. Oh, I. This deck has no hero? What kind of hero? Hero of Bladehold? Is that what you're saying to me right now? Is everything coming in? Be aggressive. Be -e aggressive. I'm gonna counter your activated ability, my dude. Let's block your land. All right, I feel like we're in good shape now. This feels like the point where you're just like, I'm in good shape. I don't even think they can attack with this Ink Moth Nexus anymore, to be quite honest with you. Oh, just these guys, eh? Okay. Well...
Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're just fracturing Gust here. I can't imagine us. Actually, we could just take two. Let's just take two and EOT fracturing Gust. Yeah, that seems better. I like that. That way, if they want to play anything, we'll kill that too. So they won't. They won't play anything, but that means they won't play anything. We're essentially paying two life to uh, deny them the ability to play any artifacts until the end of the turn. Well, I can't destroy that. But that feels okay. So we need a black and a blue here. So we can actually go blue. Oh, we need white too. So I guess we're going to have to play this. We can go blue, white, this, and then we got to go green, black. Yeah, that's fine. And we get to keep Assassin's Trophy. I'm not going to risk dying to like a top deck. I guess we have Spell Queller, but... Did I, did I mention the cranial plating? Okay, it was not cranial plating. I was like, well, it's going to be really weird. If this is a cranial plating, it's going to be real awkward. But it was not. Glittering wish? What? I didn't even... When did they get this other Nexus? Did they draw, draw three Nexuses? That's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can go... We can go wish into like... One, two, three, four... We have six mana, so we can go wish into like a four drop. That's a lot of damage. Man, I'm liking this glittering wish package. Why do they ask you if you want to if you want to do it? It's weird because like I I activated, I used it, didn't I? Get anything I want? Wow. Just get Rakdos charm, destroy an artifact. That feels pretty okay. Let's go one, two. Black, colorless. Yeah, so now we have a blocker, so they have to like top deck. Even if they top deck a removal spell, we still don't die to Nexus. So, yep, that'll do. All right. My problem with wish decks is that you don't get you don't get a real sideboard. You just have a bunch of cards that you're wishing for. And this is almost like better, this is better, it is better in the sideboard because you have five copies, four copies of it uh, with Glittering Wish and you only have one copy of it if you main deck it. Damping Sphere is also an option. That is like our one actual sideboard card. So it's Chromatic Lantern, which is kind of interesting. Not sure how I feel about the Chromatic Lantern. Do you have any, have any, any old spare commons lying around? I have a friend who's a teacher at an underprivileged school in the Bay Area that runs Magic Club to teach kids like math. Um, I think I probably have some. I do sell my commons and uncommons pretty regularly because uh, I want to get them out of the house. So I collect the bulk and then I just sell it. However, that being said, I do worry about the cost of shipping a bunch of, like, thousands and thousands of commons. Because that's always been an issue for me in the past, so I always take them locally to sell. I'm 
and take these eye pills. I have a, I have a LASIK follow up tomorrow, which will be today for those watching on YouTube. Chronic Lantern was to give me a hope of an out against Bolden. Actually, that's that's not bad. Yeah, this deck seems like it's pretty rough against any Blood Moons. Uh, Sylvan Carry added also nice against Blood Moon. Although we cannot cast it with the Pillar of the Parents, unfortunately. Mm, a Memnite and a Vault Scourge. These are a few of things, the things I don't care about. These are, this is a terrible song. Yeah, I'm actually super tired today for some reason. Like, this weekend has been, this whole week uh, with the 15 hour stream and the friends is new, like, it's been pretty exhausting. Okay, well. Well, now we're just going to keep up double uh, Lightning Helix. Well, this is pretty good. Oh, yeah, the time change definitely didn't help either. What do you have here? A Spell Pierce. <sighs> Two cards in hand, and you have a Spell Pierce. Seems good. Well, let's try it again, ladies and gentlemen. Let's try to kill that idiot again. This is why I'm like, this is where they draw a black source right off the top so they can re-equip it when things go wrong. And uh, they did. So that's pretty cool. Wow, they just had it all. They literally had an extra blue source. Did I answer my question? Yeah, I had a whole thing about it. Wow, that, where did you leave? Did you leave like right after you asked it? <laughs> just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. No, oh, they just re-equip. Creating a plate against a ridiculous magic card. Okay. Had to step out. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Why it has this secondary ability is unbelievable to me. I really don't understand it. Windswept Teeth is weird because you can only fetch one of these two cards. Like, you can only fetch forest or, or plains. Well, that is a blocker. I mean, what are they? What, 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 what are you going to get hit with Blood Blooded Elf? I guess we can try to hit something cool. I mean, we kind of have to. I don't feel like... If we're just playing Bird and something else, like, I don't feel like we're winning that game. Um, we can actually kill the Cranial Plating. Hey, that's pretty good. Let me go back to the VOD. You don't have to do all that. Um, I just said I do... I do think I have some commons and uncommons. Uh, I've always... It's always been a little cost prohibitive to ship them for me, though. Okay, well, that'll do. You literally drew it everything you needed. You had uh, double black the turn you needed it for to switch the cranial plating. You had spell pierce the turn you needed it, and you had a dispatch. So I guess that's that. What's even going on? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. We'll probably have to move out in the next month or so. What's going on? Is everything okay, Badger? I'm going to keep this because of Bird and Glittering Wish and Glittering Wish. I don't know if this hand is great. I really have no idea. But being able to play a Bird and know it's probably not going to die is nice. Also, if we get any blue or white source, we can play Geist the next turn, which is also kind of cool. I agree that we should get rid of Daylight Savings Time. It is pretty terrible. Land? Oh, that was a good one. A 
let's get rid of all time. I guess, yeah, that's actually a good point. I feel like time is an overrated construct. No blocks. That's a good one. Well, a fourth land would be nice here. That is where I would like to... Uh, Huh. Well. Actually, Supreme Verdict is good. Oh, Badger, I did not know you were going through a divorce, buddy. I'm so sorry. And yeah, I can imagine it's still a, a, an extremely stressful process, even if it's amicable. Um. Yeah, Supreme Verdict's nice, but I don't really want to lose mana sources here. I think we're just taking Fracturing Gust. Yep, no desire to attack into Etch Champion here. Oh, I roll at Affinity. I definitely think we want a Knight of Autumn either in the main deck or in the sideboard. Or multiples in the main deck. Maybe over Geist of St. Traft. I think I think Knight of Autumn is just so powerful. And we're basically dead to this next turn. Hitting a land is decent. I mean, we could go Glittering Wish into Destroy Cranial Plating. Uh, we might have to, because otherwise we're just hoping that we hit something with Bloodbraid Elf. Uh, the problem is this is actually going to get us... This is only going to get us a forest, right? Do we have a swamp? Oh, actually getting a swamp is good. Yeah, actually getting a swamp is really good. Okay, so we can go... Glittering Wish. And then we can keep up... It's got to be... It's got to be Rakdos Charm here, right? I mean, Rakdos Charm is just better in this situation. And we don't really want to get Spell Pierced, so I'm probably just going to destroy it now. And we're really cre keeping our fingers crossed that we hit a land next turn. They don't, they don't hit a... Probably should have attacked because we can't block, but they don't hit a... Um, a second cranial plating, we hit a land, and that's a... <laughs> Just phenomenal. <sighs> yeah, you better, better make sure it's extra lethal when I'm tapped out. All right, so I'm always like I don't feel like we're in a Geist of Saint Traft format right now with Modern. Like it's just, he just never gets in there as efficiently as I'd like. Actually, Autumn is probably going to be a little more of an, a little more efficient of a search term here. I think uh, I would not mind having three in the main deck. Oh, we only have two fetch lands. I guess that's fine because we have. Um, one, two, three. We have four fetchable, five fetchable lands. It's actually interesting. Yeah, the more I see Geist of St. Draft and Modern, the more it feels uh, just really hard to, to get that dude to work properly. I think that's the only thing I really... Also, Knight of Autumn is just so versatile and modern right now. This is a lot of removal. Dreadboard, three Terminates, two Assassin's Trophy, and four Lightning Helix. I wonder if there's like some sort of better creature that we can play here that's gold. Because this is a lot of removal.
Like, I can see cutting one Terminate. And maybe even the Dreadbore because you do have two Assassin's Trophies. Hero of Pre-Saint 1 actually seems insane in this deck. Wow, this deck was made for Hero of Pre-Saint 1. Just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. Alright, I'm gonna borrow two hero of pre saint ones. So if you guys ever need cards uh, for Magic Online or physical cards, you should check out, out manatraders.com. Uh, the link is in my description below. And uh, you can very, very easily um, borrow uh, physical, physical cards or Magic Online cards based on the subscription model. And if you use the promo code and the or, or the link in the description below, you'll get 20% off your first three months, which is pretty sick. Hero of Precinct 1. So basically what you do is you add the cards to your little cart and then you rent them and they will gather the cards on the internet, on the website. And uh, once they're ready, they will just open a trade with you on Magic Online. You can also rent paper, paper decks as well through their service, depending on which service you get. And it's subscription based. So it's, you get like a certain amount of tickets and and hours per month just depending on which service you get and then I obviously get a kickback because they are a sponsor uh, for, if you're borrowing physical cards they would likely mail them to you although I'm not sure uh, what their international policy is unfortunately Yeah, I would imagine it's only U.S. I imagine there's a lot of red tape for non-U.S. Uh, like to ship decks and like, you know, uh, customs and things like that. It's got to be pretty obnoxious. It's probably, I would imagine it's just not worth the, the cost. Okay, so anyway, um, we're going to add two more. Oh, don't do that. Okay. Um, yep, that's fine. And then they're ready to go. They just open the trade with you, and you can submit. Uh, third night of autumn in the board is probably pretty good. And that gives us like a million. Yeah, heroes are pretty sweet in this deck uh, I can definitely see adding a third one over here somewhere and taking out something um, hmm this deck is actually pretty sweet I think we can actually take out the dreadboard I don't think there's enough planeswalkers that like spell queller and lightning helix and assassin's trophy don't take care of although I do like having the one dreadboard in the board that we can just find if we really need a dreadboard I also don't think we care about Sylvan Carry at it as much. Do you get the credit all at once or have to build it up to get... Oh, you get it all at once. So you'll have, you'll have basically like... Like say if you're on the 750 tickets account, then you can you can borrow up to 750 tickets worth of cards. And when you return those, you, whatever credit you like don't use gets refunded, right? Like so if I borrow $300 worth of cards, then I'll have 450 left. And then when I return the 300, it'll go back up to, to 750. It's It's a pretty sweet system. And it's pretty. It's once you once you real once you get a hold of it, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to grasp. Um, what do I think of Galaxy? I don't love it. Maybe one in the sideboard would actually be pretty good. I'm not sure. I love a Tarkas command here. I, it doesn't feel that versatile. Um, I could see taking out a Tarkas command. I like one Galaxy in the board. Maybe just so we can search for it. 
I don't, the bring to light seems kind of clunky because you're going to go Glittering Wish for bring to light and then you're going to have to bring to light the next turn. So it's kind of like a lot of, it's a lot to work. Can you borrow paper vintage cards? Probably not. Um, I think the cost would be too high. You, the deposit you'd have to put down on paper vintage cards would be too high. Like you're, you're paying a percentage, I think, of the, uh, of the, the deck you're borrowing and you also have to have, a, make sure like there's a credit card associated with the account. So like. You know, obviously, if you're borrowing a thirty thousand dollar vintage deck, it seems a little little cost prohibited. I don't think I have to bring a late. We'll try a Gaddock Teague. In modern, I just don't see us like playing the uh, playing a, a, a glittering wish, and then getting a bring to light, and then next turn playing a bring to light. It's just a lot of mana. Uh, I also want to make both of these can find green sources, which is good, but I want to make sure they can also find white sources. So I kind of want a Sacred Foundry in here as well. Maybe instead of a Plains, because Sacred Foundry can be found by... No, it can't. It can't be found by Verdant Catacomb. Hmm. Does red-green get all of our colors? Red-green, I think, does, right? It gets a black. We can get the Blood Crypt. We can get Forest. We can get Sacred Foundry. Yeah, let's get a uh, wooded. Let's get a wooded foothills in here. Okay. 25 lands? 25 lands is a lot. Did we not take out... Oh, we were going to take out one of these and one of these. And we were taking out the planes for the Sacred Foundry, I think. Was it Chromatic Lantern for a Blood Moon? Uh, yes, that is correct. You just kind of board it in and hope you hit it, I guess. Um, Yeah, this... I like the Hero of Precinct ones a lot. You got the touch. You got the power. You guys know that song? Everybody knows that song. And then we just wait. Actually, it appears Badger is correct. They do rent Paper Vintage. That's pretty hilarious. The cost is a little higher, but I mean, that makes sense because you're renting Vintage cards. Oh, do they not include Power? Obviously, Vintage, uh, vintage being rented by Mana Traders is not something I exclusively familiar with yet exclusively familiar with extensively familiar with yet but um yeah that's surprising all right let's play first uh i'm gonna keep this hand we got a turn two hero into a turn three at least lightning helix that's pretty sweet Ideally, we go hit, we hit land, land, so then we can go turn two, turn three, and then either one of these on turn four. Fascinating. Um, so we take two from this, or we can just play Gemstone Mine. 
I think I'm just taking the two here and then taking another one from this. So what? No, no, cancel. White. Okay. And based on the fact that they went Forest Noble Hierarch, I feel like this guy is decent. Gonna survive, is what I'm thinking. Cartouche of... Huh. I'm... Uh, huh. All right, you've piqued my interest with Cartouche of Zeal. If we hit a land, it's great. I guess if we don't, we can still Lightning Helix. I guess? I have no idea. Alright, I'll take two. What's even happening right now? We could actually keep this up. Alright, so we're looking at 14 to 14 now. Or 12 to 12, rather. Assault strobe. Okay. Is this guy going to kill me? Did you announce your stream Friday? No, we streamed Saturday instead. At the very least, we get two creatures, two blockers here, and we gained three. And we don't. We don't do that. Well, ideally, you don't have a way to get trample. That would be really sad. I think. Okay. Well, I'm going to block this. And I'm going to hope you don't have Trample. And you did not. Okay, so... I'm pretty sure we're Bloodbraid Elfing here. Red, green, this dude, and a land. And a land, he says. Also, you can see these, uh, these heroes already doing some, some hard work here. Oh, we also get to cast the card off Cascade, so... Yeah... Let's see if your last card is Blossoming Defense number two. Okay, I think we just won the game. Let's talk about your Lord and Savior, Hero of Pre-Saint One. This is why you guys ask me to do deck critiques, because we always find the we find the sweet stuff, boys. That's not true. Sometimes we miss it. But either way, the experience is a good one. Is that bad? I don't know. Is what bad? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what you're saying right now, Chief. I am gonna submit this deck. This deck does make sideboarding easy. I'm like, do we need damping sphere? All right, we're good.
Bum 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 just can't get enough. Is that I don't know what they're referring to. Is it the four tokens we made with our Bloodbraid Elf? Because that seems bad. I'm actually gonna keep this hand. Any one land and we are golden. G g golden. Is that bad? For you. That's good. Oh, biscuits. Oh, I see. You're gonna do some Inkpont Nexus shenanigans too. I gotcha. I gotcha. Let's play this guy and we'll play a Bardos de Paradiso. That is not what it's called. Maybe it is. I don't want to completely dismiss uh, my fake attempt at Anyway. I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. Not gonna block this dude. Not gonna block this dude. Well, that's a thing, isn't it? That's a thing, isn't it? Unfortunately, this guy can't cast either one of these, so we can actually play one, but, but not both. We could just play bird and then keep up like lightning helix. That's pretty okay. I just can't get enough. You got it. I'm going to take one. And then end of turn, I'm going to actually kill this because then if they have a pump spell, they have to use it then. White and red. Oh, I see. Look at that. See? Now they couldn't deal us an extra four. How nice. The bird's so nice. The the spell nice and use it twice and things. I actually like I kinda like hero into bant charm. And we can actually just chump block here and then play Bant Charm and hope that does the does the job. <laughs> okay. Four cards is a lot. So basically they're just playing Infect. Oh, I see. bottom of the library always yield to that guy we put it on the bottom instead of destroying it because if they have any sort of like indestructible or regenerate spell it's eh, it's just better to be able to do that cast another cast trigger I am liking these Hero of Pre-Saint 1s, my dude. Yeah, 
You know what? Sure. Do we have to get rid of Blood Rain Elf? Because that's pretty sad. But at least when they get rid of Spell Queller, it's, it's, you get to cast it, right? The cards anyway cast that card? Yeah, that's pretty gas. So it's almost like uh, we get a free block off of Spell Queller, and then we get to recast the Blood Braid Elf, so that's pretty cool. I heard so much of a video about War of the Sparks. Since there's going to be a Planeswalker in each booster, I see that we'll have three options. They print less powerful Planeswalkers than Uncommon, and it works like Dalinaria. I, I think that's an option, but I don't think they're going to want to... I don't think they're ever going to want to have Planeswalkers at Uncommon. Uh, they give us a special rarity like you talked about, and they re they replace a common basic. That seems unlikely to me since it means we'll have a Mythic level card in each booster. Um, it feels more like they're going to do like a time-shifted thing, where like they actually had... You know, the time spiral, time shifted set in the packs. Like, you got one in every pack. And then it's just counted as a second pack. But, uh... Option three, I thought I had something but slipped my tongue. Which of these do you find most likely? Um, I think they're probably gonna... They see they're gonna be a special rare... I don't think they're gonna make Planeswalkers at, at lower rarities. Because also, like, you gotta consider, like... If they have a Planeswalker at, like, common... It's just going to be, like, it's now it's popper legal, you know what I mean? Well, it's got to be eligible for draft. Like, the whole point of drafting the set is that you get a Planeswalker in every pack and it's going to be super sweet. There's no way they would put a Planeswalker in every pack and make it ineligible for draft. That's just, that would just ruin drafting. I'm really tempted to take the birds out. Like, the odds of you, like, like we have 24 lands and 4 birds. I don't know. I like the birds a lot. I think they've helped us ramp a little bit, but... I don't know. The way that, that game played out, I really liked it a lot. I thought the Blood Braid Elves were great. The Hero Precinct ones really performed well there. Let's see what happens when we try again. Pot, what's going on? Michael got run over by a reindeer. Michael do 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 do. I will play first. No bird of paradise, I see. That's okay. That's okay. It's difficult to cast hero on turn one. I think we want um. What do we have? We have uh, Windswept Teeth. Both of these can get... I think we want a Temple Garden. I don't like cutting all the basics that we're cutting, but... Like, honestly, the only card we really need the, the basics for are these two. Oh, uh, I don't think you missed my thoughts on Captain Marvel. I actually enjoyed Captain Marvel quite a bit. Quite a bit. I'm going to play this first because with Reflecting Pool we can Glittering Wish on turn two. So that's pretty cool. Oh, hardened scales, eh? Classy. Alright, so I think we just glittering wish for a night of autumn. That seems pretty good, right? Actually, fracturing gust also seems pretty good. We have four lands already. I'm gonna get fracturing gust. I just want to say thanks for the sweet deck. I fired it over the weekend and MCG and leave for the first time ever with John Demons. Really? With John Demons? That's awesome, dude. That's fantastic. Glad to hear it, buddy. That deck was super fun. You can also thank Josh. Josh is the one who sent it over. We did tweak it a little bit, but Josh was uh Josh was like, let me throw all the cool mythic demons and uh 
big jund monsters I can fit into this single deck over. You got it. Look at this guy. It's a 2 2. Unbelievable. Hmm. So next time we can go hero into lightning helix, which seems pretty good. What's your out to blood moon? Um, just don't play against it. And we have one chromatic lantern in the sideboard. pretty good really you're gonna let me actually cast something here thank you pilot evan thanks so much for the buddy really appreciate it welcome back Uh, let's not do that. Let's go white and red. Mm -hmm. You got it. I feel like you should have let this part resolve so that I could have, you could have killed the token too. It's interesting. Are we dead to this? I don't think so, right? Like, unless they, if they have like Ravager, maybe. They have to have Ravager, nope. They have to have Ravager land, but they don't, they don't need land. They already have Mox Opal. So they go one, two, Ravager, activate this guy. Sack this, sack this, sack this. Yeah, we're probably just dead to this in Ravager. Okay, well, I don't see a Ravager. We're in combat. No Ravager has been sighted. I'm okay with it. All right. I think we just want to keep both of these up. Siege Rhino is interesting, but like again, if they draw Ravager, we're just dead. So now we actually have the luxury of keeping that up and making a bunch of guys. It's your boy. So if we just draw land, we can fracture and gust everything. That seems pretty good. Problems they can activate their Dark Steel. They can activate Ink Moth Nexus, regenerate it. I guess we do have Assassin's Trophy.
I'm tempted to helix this guy because then they have to sacrifice another artifact. This is actually a pretty tricky situation. I'm not sure what to do here. Can they sacrifice this guy or this? They only have one other artifact. The problem is like we could, if we draw a land, we get to Fracturing Gust. We kind of actually have to draw Fracturing Gust, otherwise just kill us with Nexus next turn. Well, we have to do this. Let's see what happens. I guess we're putting that on the stack arena. Something good. Well, not great. <sighs> yeah, I feel like there was a way to not lose this game, and I'm not sure what it was. Like, the problem is, like, they just sack everything, put it on Nexus, and kill us, right? Like... Block here. Infect's a hell of a drug. I mean, I almost feel like if we Assassin's Trophy the Hardened Scales, that would have been an option. I don't... I haven't played against Hardened Scales enough to really know what the... what the strat is. I mean, they 100% sack this guy. I don't know why they were attacking with it. We're tapped out. It's just a weird... Oh, really? Is that what you're going to do? Who knew? I'm so surprised. Yeah, this seems fine. I mean, our deck has a lot of answers for this deck, interestingly enough. Like, Terminate's good, Assassin's Trophy's good, Lightning Helix is good. I mean, I could see I could see actually getting Knight of Autumn instead of Fracturing Gust and just killing the Hardened Scales immediately. keep this hand
Chat is so amiable. My chat is amazing. I'm so grateful for you guys. I'm proud to have been a part of cultivating this chat. You guys are all wonderful. Well, that's certainly a hand, isn't it? Thank you! What is even happening right now? Wow, this is interesting. Hodge with the gifted sub. Thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. You say that now. I say that all the time. Make no mistake, dude. Pi, thank you so much for the bits. Really appreciate it. Hanger back walker, huh? All right. All right. Uh, that's pretty good. We got two mana. We're gonna hanger back walker with two mana. Whatever, whatever makes whatever makes you happy, my dude. Oh, a steel overseer, huh? Well, that's obnoxious. I don't foresee you blocking, but if you do, that's just fine. So, this is a rough choice because, like, we could Glittering Wish and guarantee us having, like, Knight of Autumn next turn, but we could also just get, like, Rakdos Charm if we need it. So, they do get an activation off of the Steel Leaf Overseer. Steel, Steel Overseer, not Steel Leaf Overseer. That's a different, that's a different thing. I mean, if I knew we were going to hit one more land, if we hit one more land, I'm just fracturing Gust. Yep, that's pretty good. So we're going to go green, and then we're going to go white, and then we're going to go Glaring Wish. And now we're going to get a Fracturing Gust. And buddy... I guess they can actually make a hanger back for one, put a second counter on it, and then they get some very, very sizable, uh... Okay, that was an interesting choice. I would have played hanger back for one, put a counter on it, make it a 2-2. Two -two. Then you get two fly floaty boys, and then you get to put a million counters on. This seems like a... This seems like a mistake. But maybe I'm not seeing something. So I go green, white, white. So this seems good. All right. <laughs> okay. Seems like you probably would have rather have had the two 1-1 one, one flyers with nine counters on them. I, I don't think we could actually, if they just played Hangerback Walker, I don't think we could have actually won. But here we are. So let's go one, two, three, and green for a Bloodbraid Elf. Oh, okay. That'll do, I guess. That's all I need to see. would have hit Night of Autumn. Oh, that would have been nice. Okay. Still looking okay. Well, this hand's pretty bad. Oh, 
Oh yeah, actually, yeah, that you would have had to put the target on the stack as soon as the ability went on the stack, which was before they had any tokens. So I guess that wouldn't have worked. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, this hand seems fine. I'm gonna bottom you because I don't think I need a second Bloodbraid Elf at this at this particular juncture. Yeah, we're gonna start with City because I want to be able to cast Hero on turn two, and then like maybe Finks on turn three. Hero feels like it's working overtime in this deck, though. This is a great addition. Ancient stirrings. Thankfully, unless you're Alex Bertoncini, you can't actually get a hardened scales with ancient stirrings, which is nice. Steel Overseer is a good one, though. I feel like they've done a lot more than we have. Pay one. Okay, well. Let's go white. Okay. Gotta do it nice and slow for these guys. Ravnica Remix? I have no idea what that is. It's the Ravnica Remix Edition. Alright, now we're just hoping we draw a removal spell for this guy. Come on, one time. That's a Siege Rhino. It's not really close. I appreciate it, but it's not close. Oh my god, Steel Oversea is such a beating. Do I just want another hero out? I think we do. I could also see just attacking with this hero. I don't like no matter who you block, I feel like we win. Like if you double block here, it's totally fine. Yeah, you're not blocking. It's the remix to Ignition. I got really need to not sing that song. What's the, um, do we figure out what the Ravnica remix is? Let's figure out if this link tells us. Ravnica remix. I'm clicking on the link. It says it nowhere in the link. Okay, well, that's. Oh, animation module. That's nice. So you can actually. Activate this guy, put two counters on here, and then pay two to get two more artifacts. Well, that's pretty good. Oh, here's a link from Former Squid. Let's see if Former Squid knows what's up. Ravnica Rematch. Ravnica Remix, March 3rd. Ravnica is a digital exclusive phantom experience made from the two lists of cards from Guilds of Ravnica and our lineage curated by our own magic ready. The two sets are mixed into two different packs. So let's draw to ABB style in the second and third packs are the same as one another and different than the first pack. The constant of the first pack includes a higher density of multicolor cards. The second and third packs have more monocolor cards, mana fixing, grabbing. That's actually awesome. That sounds fantastic. Uh, I'll take two here. I really dislike that Ink Moth Nexus is like the most the scariest card in their deck, and like if I don't have an answer for it, I just lose, and I'm pretty sure I just lose here. They have hardened scales, I guess. That's still like a lot of counters though. Three to five. Yeah, I think we're still pretty dead. Red, green, this one, and this one. All right, one time. Something good. Well, that's good. If we can survive the turn, it's good. <laughs> Let's 
go for the gusto, I guess. Hope we hope we don't die. I think we're dead. I do not see a world where they don't actually kill us. One, two, three. Yep, this is just nuts. Yeah, we're like one turn away from just utterly blowing them out, it seems like. But that's all you need is one turn. As a new player thing about Divinity System Monitors, there are a couple decks you would recommend as a good starting point. I was thinking Elves or Slurs because I love them. Um, elves is actually fine. As long as you're familiar with how Elves works. I think Elves is good because it actually puts up results. Whereas Slivers is a favorite deck of mine, but it actually doesn't perform that well. But um, yeah, other than that, I'm not sure what would be good for like a new, a new modern player. What about Fulminator Mage? I think Fulminator Mage could be good here. I mean, if this Kitchen Finks was actually a Fulminator Mage, I think we'd actually do pretty well. Yeah, Elves has a lot of reach. There's a lot of there's a lot of plans you can you can have with Elves as well. You can have like the Shaman of the Pack kill you plan. You can pump with Azuri. Collected Company is sweet. Like, there's a lot of uh, a lot of decisions to make in Elves. Oh, K Command is also nice. But I want to be able to kill a land is I think really my my goal here. Yep, cool. Cool deck. Okay. So And also we added Knight of Autumn, which kind of uh helps with the kitchen fink plan. I also don't like spell queller just because it, it you hit it with um You end up hitting it with Bloodbraid Elf. Let's put three Fulminator in the mage. We can leave the Kitchen Finks. And then we're not actually playing blue, really, right? Oh, we got the Sylvan Charms. That seems fine. Oh, it is a very good card. You're not wrong. It is a very good card. Yeah, I think Fulminator Mage is probably pretty sweet. It also triggers here of Presane 1, which is gas. And actually it does kill... Hmm. Is it better than Bant Charm? It's probably better than Bant Charm, right? Interesting. If we cut the Bant Charm, we can actually just not have any blue spells. But I guess that doesn't really matter, right? Like, it's not really affecting things. 
Like, this destroys an artifact or it gets rid of a creature. This destroys an artifact. It gets rid of most creatures. We also have Lightning Helix, Assassin's Trophy, and Terminate to do this kind of same thing. Countering an instant spell is interesting, but I don't think we really need that. I think I'd just rather have Kolagon's Command. I might actually... I could see actually playing one more trophy over one Lightning Helix because it just does a better job. I'm just going to buy a... Actually, let me see how much Lightning Helix even goes for. Or uh, Assassin's Trophy, rather. I'm really not a fan of that. Six tickets? All right. Well, that's unfortunate. Deck Builder. Assassin's Trophy. All right, I'm renting one Assassin's Trophy. And we're going to put it in over the one Lightning Helix. Common for to carry me home. Oh, and Offensa seems great. Holy smokes. What would you say my favorite deck in standard is at the moment? I actually don't know. Are you going to change the E price look up to mandatory? Is that I don't know if that is possible, actually. I don't even know who the E price. I don't even. Oh, it's GoBots currently? I actually don't know how to do that. Thank you. But I probably could. Swifty Gamers. Thank you so much for the sub, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. And Offensa seems like gas. Um, okay. All right. So Mana Traders is like, hey, bro. Here's a... Do I have three? Oh, one's in the sideboard. Oh, that's that makes sense. That's cool that I have three at least. I kind of like that. Thank you. Snoozle Moo, welcome back, buddy. Thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. At least I feel like that's a resub. Thank you. DJ Thunderdome, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Or welcome, rather. I guess just welcome. Okay, so... Take out one of these. Add one of these. When it happens, put a 1-1 counter on another tapped creature you control. If a non-token creature... Yeah, this actually seems fantastic. I want to take it off the Kitchen Finks. This seems... I like the cards that we added. I think they're really good. I will play first. Uh yeah, this hand is capable. There's no there's no hero or bird of paradise, which is kind of interesting. But we're just going to run blood crypt out there. Um we put in Anafenza because it's just a very good... It's a 4-4 four, for four, 3. Uh, and it has several relevant abilities, right? Like... The first ability is uh, whenever it attacks, put a 1-1 counter on another tapped creature you control. So if it attacks with anything else, uh, that the other token get the other creature gets bigger. And if any creature would die, or if a card not on the battlefield would be put into an opponent's graveyard, exile it instead. So, I mean, like, that's just extremely relevant and modern to begin with. It's gonna be a hero. I need a hero. You play Blood Elf or a Falcon? Yeah, Blood Elf is pretty nuts. Aristocrat's fine, but we're not like playing an Aristocrat deck where we can actually sacrifice 
creatures for it. Yep, you got it. Probably gonna kill this guy. Seems mean, but I really don't want to like sit sit back and do nothing here. So I feel like this is also a fine turn to uh, to just kill an overgrown tomb and put them back a bunch of lands. Thank you. Sarav with the resub. 17 months. My god. What a time to be alive. Um, we can fall in your mage and kill the overgrown tomb. That actually seems not terrible. Uh, we can't make the manas hurt us less. Well, maybe we could. Is this Badger? There's a lot of lands in our hand. I am not thrilled about the number of lands that we have drawn. I mean, it's Elves, so it makes total sense that it's Badger. Something good. That's pretty good. That's probably the best thing we could hope for here. One, two. Oh, we can actually, oh wow, this is actually gonna be brutal. We're gonna Supreme Verdict here. Uh, white, blue. Uh, blue. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> white. White. And this. Oh, Sarah, we've already added Priest Hero, Priest Saint 1. That was like the first thing we added to the deck. Wow. I mean, we don't have anything either, but nonetheless, like, the Elves deck really has to rebuild itself. Well, that's a good way to start. Glittering Wish number two. Eh, that's a big boy. One, two, three. I'd rather take one than use... That. Actually, Gemstone Mine's not doing us any favors here. Yeah, just being able to pull out the... Oh, yes, I will use this ability. Just being able to pull out a Supreme Verdict from the sideboard is pretty nuts. Got him. Well, these are some good... These are some good draws here, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to take that, and then I'm going to hope to hit something. Well, we did hit something, so we can go red, black. Oh, my God. 
my god, you're killing me, Badger. Oh, wow. That's a good hit. That is a good hit. An A Pyromancer deck with Young Pyromancer and Hero and a bunch of multi color spells sounds actually pretty sweet. Uh, I'm just going to chump block here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've drawn nine lands this game. So hard to feel uh hard to feel too bad. Bloodbraid Elf. Coligon's command. Coligon's command into what? Siege Rhino? Ugh. I wish we had a way to deal one damage in our graveyard. Is it Staticaster in the sideboard would be nice. You ever get bored and pull out some nose hairs? No. No. So they're going to have one, two, three. We can't kill anything with this, which is the really unfortunate part because they have double... Archdruid. All right, so we're going to go red, black. That's this. God, the two damage does nothing, right? Like, nothing dies to the two damage. Uh, do I like Pauper? Not really. I like more expensive cards because they usually have bigger effects. I, I appreciate the diversity in the popper format. Yeah, we're getting back Siege Rhino and just shooting their, just making them discard, I guess. Return to a creature, choose a creature, Siege Rhino, make you discard. Let's see what your last card is. Cavern of Souls? Okay. So white, black, green, and this color. Okay. Go to six. We have four blockers. So we can one, two, three, four. Two guys are getting through, so we're actually dead. All right. Well, if we had one more land, if we went to seven here, we'd actually be able to survive, but... No bueno. If one of our guys had first strike, we'd also be in good shape. The the smallest, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, this guy didn't untap, so we're actually not dead yet. Uh, which is actually pretty sweet, I think. Not a land. Bird of Paradise. Okay, well, we're still alive. All right, block, block, take one, go to two. How are we not dead? Okay, blocks, block your big guy, block your small guy. No land. Okay, well. If they don't, if they hit a land, then we're okay. 
Oh my god. We're so lucky. Thank you. Penthic, thanks so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Welcome back. Don't be a land. Oh, we did it. Did we do it? We have one, two, three, four, five mana to spend. So what we can do is do this. Glittering Wish. Probably Knight of Autumn and just gain four here. Or Blood Baron, but we die. We can't actually cast Blood Baron, so we're going to have to get Knight of Autumn and gain four. So we can go white, green, black, Knight of Autumn. And gain four. All right, we're not dead. Okay, that's pretty bad. Nope, don't like that. Oh, I do like that though. Oh, uh, I should be on June Rent. Actually, I should be on, what are we, over? We're like 1,002 over, so 750, 250, 252. I'm actually going to put car payment. I just had to spend $900 this past weekend on car stuff. So I'm just going to put that up for until we get to June, because it's a little early for June rent, I think. So I'm just going to put car payment, because, like, that's a lot of... One, two... That was just a big car expense out of nowhere. I got new tires for 500, and I got... Or 400, and I got a new battery and a new alternator. Uh, my new tires cost about 390 and uh, 392, and I got my serpentine belt replaced, and I got my 12 volt battery replaced, which cost me about 500 bucks in total. Uh, also, it was a Prius, so they had to diagnose it. I think we're just gonna smell like this again. We don't really have a sideboard, so. Uh, the mic did get me a deal. Actually, I got I got I got nicer than the most basic tires, and they were three ninety two. So it was actually a deal, but it was still a lot. You know what I mean? So I figure you guys will know what any donations are going to. As usual. Oh, donation. Oh, they fixed it. Oh, this is this is nice now. Okay, so it's one thousand two. So two fifty two. Stars, let's say nine, two fifty two. And after we'll end this at the beginning of May. So like O four slash thirty one slash twenty nineteen. Okay. Can I move that center thing? Settings. Well, that's annoying. Okay, anyway, this hand looks great. I'm going to keep it. Uh, being able to go bird into Glittering Wish is nice. Uh, what happened to cause you to get diagnosed? Um, I had a bunch of bunch of lights were coming up. I had the big... Um, I have an 06 Prius, and it has about 200,000 miles, and it still actually runs fantastically. I love my Prius. Um, but a bunch of the diagnostic lights, like the big... The big red triangle with the exclamation part mark in it. And a lot of these are related to voltage. Uh, so I had to get a new battery. And I wanted to figure out what was going on. I'm like, what's what's wrong with my, my car? And then we figured it out. Okay, so I'm going to put... Thank you! Car expenses. So I got the abrupt part. 252. 
TM, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Uh, take out the abrupt part. Let's see if that looks better. It does. It does. It looks much better. Okay, so we're going to play Reflecting Pool. We're going to probably Glittering Wish here. And what do we want? Glittering Wish. What do we want? When do we want it? No. I think we just take Supreme Verdict just to have it. Love watching you and wanted to wait till you were streaming to give you. Really appreciate it. TMO6, thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all of those things. Um, pillar, we can go Glaring Wish, kill this guy with like a Dread Boar. Or we can just trade with a Siege Rhino. I think we're going to. Um, it's a tough call. Tough call. Let's go Pillar Green. Or, nope, not not red. Green and white. Glittering wish again. I feel like it's Dreadbore here. I really like Blood Baron a lot. Red and black. Man, glittering wish OP, my dudes. So can I just play this in Supreme Verdict? I kill a land and a Steel Leaf? I don't know if that's good. I really don't want to play another Siege Rhino into their board. Blue, white, white, this. Yeah, sure. I don't love it, but it's still a two for two. We don't need the birds. Oh my god. Just stop it, Badger. Okay, so we're going to go white, green. I mean, I think this is a fine trade. That's three Steel Leaf Champions. That's ridiculous. That is not a reasonable number of Steel Leaf Champions. Close this one. Close this one. Close this one. What? We're drawing an excessive amount of lands in this matchup. One, a two, a three. Rhinoceros every day. That guy's a real problem. But we have Lightning Helix, so that's okay. We have two Lightning Helixes. Actually, let's depending on how they block, we might just be able to kill them with Lightning Helixes. So let's not... Uh... Oh... What is this you're doing? Adding three mana. Oh no. Oh no. What is even happening? 
Okay, so I'm tempted to actually just kill the Steel Leaf Champion because then we get to keep both Siege Rhinos. Which means we also get to deal four coming through. Ba -da 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 -da. White and red. Yeah, alright. I like that. So now that's six. We still have two Siege Rhinos. This guy can be problematic, but they also just have to have... Eh, Shaman's fine. Take four. Sabalba! Sabalba! Oh, a land. Well, that's pretty cool. Said no one ever. One more. Just these two? Hmm. Are you in a collected company and hope to hit an elf? You are. You're going to hope to hit an archer, aren't you? Or they're just trying to go to one. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, they can't, actually, because they'd have to tap. Yeah, all right. So I think they're just going to one here. Man, Siege Rhino is still a hell of a dude. My thing I love about this deck is that there's so many options for, for gold cards. Like, you can still add Deputy of Detention. You can add Detention Sphere. Oh, wow. Why did I think it was a 4-4? I thought you were just trying to go to 1. Alright. Alright. I like the way... The Fulminate Ranges are nice. That is not how you spell my name, you bloody savage. Okay. Um, Badger, good games, buddy. I wasn't 100% sure that was you until someone mentioned it. I will add as a buddy. Okay, so I do like the Kolagon's commands. Um, are there any other cool commands that we could play? What does Ojitai's command do? Return a creature. No, that's not great. Maybe it's alright. Dromoka's command seems pretty good. Ooh. Cryptic command. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. I like Dromoka's command better than Atarka's command in this deck. Dromoka's command also makes them sacrifice like their... Uh, their hardened scales. Okay, what is this? Charms? Let's look up charms as well. There should be like 10 charms. 15 charms. Because all the creatures are through more. Draw two cards. Draw two cards. No. No. Actually, I don't hate giving plus one, plus one lifelink till end of turn. No. Mm, this one's good. Mm, no. Okay. And then we have these regular charms. Sultai charm is pretty good. That is probably one of my one of my top charms. I like a Golgari charm on the sideboard. Huh. I don't know if I'm ever gonna reach for a siege rhino in the sideboard. I feel like I can cut the Siege Rhino. Um, I 
Same thing with Boros Charm. Boros Charm seems a little narrow. Whereas, like, I'd almost rather have a Golgari Charm, which destroys an enchantment instead and also gives neg gives creatures negative one, negative one. But we do have Trophy to deal with that. I don't know. Like, I like the negative one, negative one, especially against things like um, Affinity. I think it's pretty good because it kills all the one ones. <laughs> Okay, so I just don't want to change anything else. I kind of like the way this this played so far. I like the spell quellers gone because us hitting spell queller with Bloodbraid Elf, or also just holding up, um, having to hold up. What is it? John deals two damage to each creature. The thing is, like killing the one ones is nice because like it keeps your hero alive. It keeps your uh, full money rage alive, Bloodbraid Elf alive. John Charm killing. Dealing two damage is a little more aggressive. Plus, on four mana, we can play uh, Glittering Wish into Golgari Charm, which is nice. All right, let me try one more. We'll try one more. I think I like the way this looks. Like not having to hit. Like what I was, what I was saying was that this deck likes to tap out a lot. Like you're always like. You're always using most of your mana. Oh, I have to tap out this turn. I have to play all my spells or tap. You know, you're you're playing things on your turn. So like having to keep up spell queller mana seems pretty bad, and uh, also hitting it with Bloodbraid Elf seems pretty pretty feel bads as well. Orzhov Charm was the one that I wanted to be good. I'm like, come on, Orzhov Charm, you can do it, and it never was, and that was sad to me. I will play first. This hand seems great. I would be surprised if we lost at this hand, but then again, Sabalba. Sabalba. Okay, well, so Fracturing Gust is just the uh, the card we get, right? I'm just gonna get a Fracturing Gust out of the sideboard. I kind of want to slow roll it though until we actually absolutely have to reveal it. <laughs> Simic, got you, buddy. I got you. Yeah, because they just drew a lantern, so I want them to actually play the lantern. You got it. Okay. Uh, you guys are saying tequila, but the actual word of the song is Sabalba, so, you know. Got it. All these things you got. Okay. Yep, so now we're probably going to search for... They're going to let me draw this Terminate, because they know how bad it is. Yep, 
Glittery, glittery, glittering, glittering wish. Oh, not my blood bright elf. Are you just going to keep this reflecting pool? Do we know what they drew last turn? Collective brutality. Oh boy. Wow. Yeah. That was like what the last card in your hand? Other than the card you drew? That yeah, seems good. <sighs> well, that's fun. I mean, it's not really reasonable to wait till we have seven mana to cast that, so. Sabulba. Hey, Sabulba! Come on. Yeah, I'll cast that, dude. You got it. Do, 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 do. Attackers. Let's kill that. Shut off your little trophies. Oh, I'll go Glimmer Void. All right, so now we know they have Glimmer Void in hand. Glimmer. Which they played. I don't think we know their last card. We might, but I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> oh, Christ. Never fails. They always have exactly what they need. It's actually quite amazing. Two, three, four. See, you're on us, sir. It's burnt, 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 burnt. Oh, okay. You want to get this guy too? Oh, all right. I actually can't imagine playing this deck in the two-man queues. Like, you got to be some kind of miserable. You got to be pretty miserable to play this in the two-man to two in the like the just the two-person queues. I don't know. Like, cause there's a point. Like, we're right now. We're at the point where like we just can't actually win. Like, they just lock us out of drawing anything relevant. Whenever there's a land, they leave it on top. Whenever there's not a land, they mill it. Yep. Okay, just don't care anymore. It is. It's absolutely boring. You do nothing while you watch your opponent do nothing. It's actually just a completely unfun deck to play and to play against. But, you know. I'm going to take the Terminates out. I'm going to bring in more uh, relevant enchantment removal, or artifact removal, rather, like Rakdos Charm. 
Assassin's Trophy. Actually, Night of Autumn seems pretty good. Remember the time I was like, man, I'd be surprised if we lost with this hand. And then we lost with that hand. This is how you remind me of what I really am. Nothing here. Oh, I see. Oh, you're fashionably late to the party, Birds of Paradise. We could Glittering Wish here. Then they just like Collector Brutality us. I guess we're just playing Bird here. How long do you play the Critique decks? Uh, usually about two hours and about five matches. Four or five matches. Okay. Badger, send me your final list because I updated it today. So send me everything you want and uh, I don't know if you're playing other games for Magic, but you playing Sekiro Shadows Die Twice when it I don't know. I have no idea what. I have no idea what Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is. No, Badger, you're not a pain at all. Dude. <laughs> don't even worry about it. Do not worry about it. Um, Let's go Siege Rhino. Actually, let's go Anafenza. One, a two. Actually, I like Siege Runner here because next turn, if we draw land, we can go Hero and Anafenza. Yeah, okay. White, black, green, bird city. Sure. <sighs> yep, they never don't have it, do they? All right, red, green, blank. Come on, Rakdos charm. Kill your stupid bridge, but you got a welding jar like you always do. Never don't have that. What's the first article? When? Uh, it should be Wednesday.
Come on. Kolagon's command one time. Kolagon's command. That's a hero. I need a hero. Oh, I can't even cast that because I don't want to, like, waste my mana. Yep. <sighs> Alright, well. Look at all these terrible cards in your deck. They are amazing. How about an Assassin's Trophy? Cool. Mill the Knight, draw the Anafenza. Seems good. You got it, my dude. Enjoy your... Yeah. I mean, I probably would have killed the birds personally, but... Oh, cool. You're milling an assassin's trophy. That's good. Alright, let's see what we draw. Ready? Fulminator Mage. Alright. Well... Now, now we never get to see anything. That's great. Oh, is it my turn? I get to draw mana confluence? Cool. Thanks, my dude. Could just drop hero hero. This can be only spent for for heroes. Okay, so never mind. We're not doing that. Or only spent for color multicolor spells, not heroes. Uh, Deputy Detention is actually terrible in Modern. Every time I play Deputy Detention in Modern, it, it dies immediately and they get their card back. I would much rather have Detention Sphere, which is significantly harder to deal with. Thank you! Penumbra, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, all right. That's that's pretty neat. Would you look at that? <laughs> Four Emrakul on the board. Oh, red, black, red. I mean, a braid is just worse than our gold color cards, like Rakdos Charm, that do the same thing. I mean, you can cast Scandi or Rasko. Like, the thing is, like, a braid, you just can't cast with Pillar of the Parents or a lot of the other cards. So there's just no reason to play a braid over, like, something, something gold that does a similar effect, like a Kolagon's Command. Like, this is the least fun I've had all day today, just because it's like I'm not even playing the game. I'm literally just watching you deny me draw steps and things, and it's just kind of miserable.
so like I'm either forced to concede or like I'm forced to sit here and hope that like we hit six in a row like it's such a dumb it's just not even fun oh you gotta let me draw the city of brass that's cool oh another land after that Oh, a trophy. What are the odds we're going to draw that? Zero. Okay. The problem is, like, I'm streaming for you guys, so, like, them playing solitaire is just not fun for anybody. And so, like, I'm... And also, just a, it's just a waste of my time. Like, my time is more valuable than that. Like... Like, it's actually making me, like, legitimately angry. Like, I'm just, like, it's so irritating to play against this deck. I'm like, yeah. okay, well. Is in my LGS who plays Lantern. He also has a verbal take that makes him end his sentences in a long mm, sound. I'm not a volume person, but Lantern makes me want to snap when it's favor. What? Uh, I mean, I assume, yeah, like, I assume you guys don't mind me conceding, but it's just the principle of, like, this asshole winning, like, with a lantern deck, like, when we're playing against each other, and, like, I hate that, like, I'm letting you win because your deck is so, literally so obnoxious. Like, you basically won because you annoyed me enough. Like, you basically won because, uh, I was, I was too bored to play out the game, right? Like, I mean, it's just an obnoxious, it's really, it's just an obnoxious deck. Like, so that's, like, just a frustrating thing to have to do. Like, be like, oh, okay, cool. How did, why did you... I don't like the Terminates, actually, because we do have Assassin's Trophy and Lightning Helix and Kolagon's Command. We have a lot of ways to deal with creatures. Plus Glittering Wish for, like, the, the really violent offenders. I'd almost rather have, like, more versatile card. Um... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, can we put one Karanos in the deck? Is that just too greedy? That doesn't seem greedy, right? We have 24 lands and 4 birds. Wow, I kind of like Karanos a lot, dude. I mean, they just make you draw lands, though, is the problem. Like, how does that actually win, though? Yeah, I don't know. I don't... I don't know. So, oh man, something that tilts me more than anything is when people call Magic a children's card game. Like, it's not really a children's card game because there are literally no children who play it. I think, like, when there's a child who plays Magic, that kid actually gets an, an immense amount of attention because it's not a game for kids. It's literally an adult's game because it's an expensive hobby that requires lots and lots of money and practice and the ability to travel. Uh, there's nothing childish actually about Magic whatsoever. So it actually, it actually tilts me an immense degree when people are like it's a children's card because it's just it's just such a like it's just a chintzy sound bite that people like to say that doesn't even make any sense <sighs> I feel like there are two cards that are better than terminate and I can't think of what they would be I almost feel like we should go five drop What's that quote from? Let's solve this the only way we know how. What's that from? Um, <laughs> yeah. 
you go abridged. <laughs> uh, but my grandpa gave me those cards. Yeah, also, like, most MTG content creators, uh, if not, like, all of them, are between the ages of 25 and 40. So it's like, there's a, uh, you know, you're hard-pressed to find any any evidence of this being a children's card game. But anyway, I digress. Oh, Rhythm of the Wild is actually pretty interesting. That's hilarious. I almost just want another Night of Autumn. Like, being able to destroy things like Lantern or Hardened Scales, just being able to kill these cards is so important. Do we really need Blood Crypt? I think, the, I think actually just having another Temple Garden is almost better than Blood Crypt. Which means you want a way to get red. I guess I guess both of these get Temple Garden and Sacred Foundry, but neither of them gets the swamp. I mean I'd rather play I'd rather play Kasali Pride Mage than Cinder Vines. I feel like they're very similar. Whereas Kasali Pride Mage does let Birds of Paradise attack for a zero. I mean, Assassin's Trophy is better than Abrupt Decay, for sure. Okay, we need one card, guys. One card. Uh, I don't think we're ever going to have the, the mana to actually activate Theater, but I like Theater. I think it's a good card. Uh, Noble Hierarch is still a thing, but we don't have enough blue. We want to be able to add black and red for these, uh, for obvious reasons. Do we just put one Karanos? <laughs> I'm actually a big Karanos fan, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this one more match, which I usually, because we're at two hours and fourteen minutes, which is a lot. But this deck has been pretty fun, so I'm gonna play one more match with it, just because I want to. Uh, we actually don't go that wide. Oh, I do kind of like I do I do like Urborg actually. I like Urborg over Swamp, especially for not searching for the Swamp. Let's put that in there. Yeah, now that we don't have uh, Verdant Catacombs, the Urborg seems great. It just makes our other lands better. Um, you know what? I'll give it a go. Oh, what up? Just one with mono blue turns and heard you talk about unfun decks and stuff. <laughs> oh, good times. All right. Well, this is a lot of gemstone mines. Oh, uh, there are quite a few spells in this deck. I mean, this deck is mostly spells. Like, if you look, you can see... Glittering Wish, Helix, Assassin's Trophy. Colagon's Command. Uh, I guess that's it, but they're mostly at 2 and 3. Oh, that's just sad. Why are you the way that you are? I hate everything. Oh, look who it is, my dudes. Oh, we discard Lightning Helix, I bet. Is this blue eye control? I kind of like it. That's a yikes for me, dog. That's a yikes for me, puppy dog. 
discard a card. Yeah, let's get rid of the Lightning Helix. Oh, I like this green Mana Leak. Oh, uh, we already took Geist out. This is not a Geist format. Modern is not very uh, friendly to Geist of St. Traft. Uh, let's get... Let's get Sacred Foundry so we guarantee our red source. Coligons come oh, that's pretty nice. Heroes for days. Let's attack Liliana of the Veil. Vale. She's kind of a she's kind of a biscuit. You got it. Also, if you guys are looking to pick up cards, definitely head on over to CoolStuffInc.com. You can find some of my content there beginning this Wednesday. And uh, you can also get 5% off your purchase with cool st with uh, Frank5, with the promo code Frank5. CoolStuffInc.com, the promo code Frankles McFivums. But don't use Frankles McFivum as the code, because that's not the code. Just use Frank5. Don't be weird. Don't make it weird. Uh, one, two. I really don't like. I really don't like the idea of walking into a. So if they get to kill this guy, then this Liliana survives. I really don't like that either. So I'm gonna try to get some value off of this gentleman. Ocean man, take my mind with land and then see you. Do I want to cast this? I don't even think I want to cast this, to be honest with you. If they don't have the fourth mana for damnation, then buttery biscuits. All right, we're just going to attack with everybody at Liliana. Not you. Actually, you can go here, because even if they kill this, they still Liliana still dies. So let's make sure we maximize all the damage. <laughs> yeah, Jim Davis is great. All right, so that feels good because even if they kill, even if they end up damnationing, we can still play Karanos or Siege Rhino. God, it's weird to hit an Assassin's Trophy and just not want to cast it. Man, where's my Assassin's Trophy now? One, two, three. Wow. So if we alpha, they go block here, they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But then they gain 3. Oh, God. I like that if I hit undo, it just undoes one of them. So they take 7, and then they get a zombie out of it? Yeah, that doesn't seem ideal. Did they actually? I didn't count the guards in the graveyard. They might have actually just had a seven to flip Escanta anyway. So, I mean, it might have just been better to blow up the Escanta. Oh, damnation. That seems good. Are they getting four zombies from this? Yep, yeah, that's pretty brutal. Yikes. That's a yikes for me, dog.
That seems good. Look at that perfect card with the perfect mana. Yep. Well, we get to draw two cards at least. Oh, play another Siege Rhino. Seems good. White, green, black, other color. Yes. I mean, Karanos is never going to be a creature. I love Karanos. I always forget this trigger in paper, so he's usually just an enchantment that does nothing, and it's great. <laughs> oh. Seems good. Still seems good. All right. Welp. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we just have to kill zombies here, right? Yeah, we probably should have played the lightning helix first. So that if they have like spell pierce or mana leak and yeah, like we couldn't have paid for that anyway. So I mean, we're probably just dead here. I know we misplayed at some point in this game and it was likely, I think it was probably not killing as Kanta. As, I didn't realize how many cards they had in their graveyard. I thought we were going to have a little more time than that. But um, if we killed the Ascanta, they don't get cast down. They don't get second cast down and uh, you know. We're actually significantly ahead. We were worried about Damnation, which we did see, but, you know, maybe we shouldn't have been worried. Done. The sideboarding for this deck is interesting because it's basically non-existent. Uh, I don't think Bellringer is good enough in modern. Um, four mana to just discard a card and gain three. It's not terrible, but like, is it better than like Siege Rhino? Which also deals three and is a four five and has trample and it's easier to cast. Oh, Blood Baron's fantastic in Modern. You're crazy. It can't be hit by Assassin's Trophy. It can't be hit by Lightning Helix. It can't be hit by Swords to Path Exile. It blocks all the black and white creatures like Gurmag Angler, Tassiger, uh, Kalidus. Uh, can't be cast down. Um, like, there's nothing really odd about it. It's just a really efficient 4-4 lifelink pro-black pro-white creature. can't be blocked by um what do you call it can't be blocked by lingering souls tokens like it just goes on and on Matthew Ori, ducks are pretty sweet. Actually, I don't think bread's good for them, though. Check Google what to feed ducks, and I don't think bread is uh, accepted as, like, a, a a good feed for ducks anymore. Uh, Smiter's just worse than Anafenza, right? I mean, it's good against, like, Liliana, but... Oh man, this is rough because we... Oh, Anafenza actually... No, we can actually play this and we can still play Anafenza. This could be our white source. And then Hero actually... Yes, yeah, so we can go like Meta Confluence and then it's like white, black, green or something.
Ocean man. Um, yeah, we're just gonna play NFNs in here. White, black, greenums. And sacrifice. Oh boy, having a good time. Having a good time. I guess we're just going to play this as a 4,000, 3,000 creature. Or we can just actually play hero. Yeah, this is probably fine. Put two counters on it. Let's get rid of Hero of Precinct 1. I mean, if I knew we were going to draw land, I would get rid of the uh, City of Brass, but I don't know that, so I'm just going to bank on this Karanos. Mm. And Fatal Push as well. Wow, that's amazing. I <laughs> just have it all. Oh boy. Red, blue. So let's not hit a land this turn. How about that? So that we can kill the Liliana. What? What? That was an interesting choice. Okay. Well. Do 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 do. I'm fulminating. One, two, three, four. I guess they could actually tap this to activate the other one if they really wanted to, but... Can you imagine the situation where, like, we just don't draw a spell for the next three turns and they actually get to ultimate Liliana? I can. I can imagine it. We just have Assassin's Trophy Liliana. It's nice because it lets us actually... It's a thing we can actually do. Alright, they said ouch, wrong time to discard that, which means they might actually not have anything. Let's Dreadbore so they don't get more land, I guess. Uh, let's go red and blue. I'm just probably going to use this. All right, now we got a Karanos online. I can totally imagine that. Yeah, I could see it happening. Ocean Man. Ocean Man. I think they're going to attack here. No, they're going to play a Kali Toss. That's pretty good. Um, well, we're just going to shoot your face. Shoot your face. 
that's a glittering wish and I will use the ability um th we take three if we ban charm this guy we go to 10 it's pretty rough we can also just get the blood burn and play blood burn next turn which is pretty good All right. I mean, they could attack and put us to seven, and then we play Blood Burn and take like three, but they're not doing that. I think that would have been, I think that would have been fine choice. Thank you. Everything is terrible. Thanks so much for the reset, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. I'm pretty sure if we play Blood Brown here, they just counter it and then they kill us. I don't think we're going to win this game. What does Collective Brutality do against Blood Baron? Collective Brutality doesn't have a Sacrifice a Creature mode. Uh, I do like Colagon's Command against Creeping Tar Pit, though. Hmm. One, two, three, black, this guy. Let's see if this resolves in any way. Nope, didn't think so. Well, now they can hit us down to two. We are critiquing the deck that's literally on the screen. Nope, can't do that. All right. Well. Okay. Well, we're not coming out with creeping tar pit, so we're sta we're alive for longer than we should be. And if we get to hit a hit a non land here, oh, the turn I wanted to land. That's nice. Oh, okay. Well. One, two, three, activate. They can't activate both next turn, which is nice. One, two, three, one, two, three. I can get Knight of Autumn, actually. That's not bad. Turn a creature from your graveyard, deal two damage. Let's get back. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven mana, three of which heals damage. So we have four non-damaging mana. So we can actually grab a knight. Shoot this guy. One, two, three. Or they can just counter it and kill us next turn. Of course. All right. <laughs> On that note, we are going to finish up with that. I don't, I don't know. Like I feel like we're missing something, and I don't actually know what it is. Um... I like all the cards in the deck. The mana is actually fine. I think we're actually hurting ourselves a little bit too much with the with the City of Brasses and the Mana Confluences. Um, I feel like we could add something else. Ancient Ziggurat's only creatures, right? I mean, I feel like we have Disruption. Assassin's Trophy is Disruption. Kolagon's Command is Disruption. Fulminator Mage is Disruption. Those are all Disruption. Um... I mean, Kolagon, and Kernos is pretty sick, but it's not as sick as, like, two ones and, uh, and two mana counter spells that only counter non-creature spells, apparently. Um, I don't know if it really is better than any of these. Like, the, 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 the problem is, like, you guys are naming cards that don't actually fill roles that we need to be filled. Ziggurat's only creatures, but it does help us cast a lot of the cards in our deck, like Birds, Hero... Talkery, thanks so much for the reset, buddy. Really appreciate it. Um, 
Cruel Tomato might be what we're missing. That's actually uh, that's actually pretty gas. Uh, Cavern of Souls isn't great because you don't have a ton of the same creature types. Pillar of the Parents is great. Birds kind of throws me. Like I kind of like it on turn one, but otherwise it's just a bad draw. <laughs> Matthew Ori, those decks are cuties, my dude. Yeah, I could see two ziggurats in place of cities, just because we do have a lot of... Uh, we do have enough creatures. And a lot of times, if you go light... You, if you go Glittering Wish into a creature, then you can just play... You can just wait for, wait to use the ziggurat for the creature. I'm not sure about the mana base. The mana base is the most conflicting thing I have. But it's been working. Like, it's working. It's just a matter of, like, you don't want to die to your own mana base. But... um. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, the deck was really fun. Seamok, I really appreciate you letting me play it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, I'm not leaving yet. But, uh, you know, if you guys want to have your own decks critique by me, definitely check out the link in my Twitch profile or my YouTube description. They're both below. And uh, we can definitely do that. And uh, you can get a hold of me. And you can also check out Cool Stuff Inc. You can use code FRANK5 to get 5% off. You can check out Mana Traders. And if you use the link in my description, you will get 20% off your first three months of a subscription, which is a pretty sweet deal. And uh, if you use uh, meundies.com slash FrankLapore, you will get 15% off along with free shipping and free returns. So, um, yeah, those are all uh, sweet offers and they help the stream out. So if you guys are looking for a way to support this channel, definitely check those out. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. And I will see you next time.